This edition of Computer Club Lesson was recorded on January the 25th, 2016. Enjoy! Hello, welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. Very nice. It's a key. We are going to have a uh, presentation today uh, rather than um, what I usually do. And the presentation today is going to be the fact that the encryption for your computer and for your networks is basically under attack. Uh, from some of our friendly governments in um, Britain, United States, to some degree Canada, Germany. Um, the, the major democracies are, to some degree or other, putting encryption under attack. I don't know whether you've heard about it or heard blur blurbs on the news about different people saying, well, we need to uh, break encryption uh, because we need to know what's going on on the internet and we can't see anything. Um, that, as we're going to, we're, we're going to, in, we're going to look at that and see whether it's really true. Now, first off, you, you've got to understand why you need encryption um, on your, uh, on your computer. You need it to just basically talk to your friends, to have your, con your conversations private. Anybody can listen in on them. You need it to do business. If you want to do business on your computer and do it on the internet and banking and such and buy things, um, you need encryption to do it. Simple encryption. So we'll just look at something simple so you get the whole idea. Uh, on your keyboard, the, the, uh, the first six, six keys are what we call QWERTY, Q-W-E-R-T-Y, okay? You all know that. To encrypt that, what you would do for something really, really simple is just move one key to the right. Then what would you have? you would have W-E-R-T-Y-U. One key to the right. And that's what you get. It, has, it bears a little bit of resemblance to this, but if you did that uh, in a more robust way, uh, this would bear no resemblance to that. Okay? The more complex the substitution, the better the encryption. And the mathematics to do this is mind-numbingly complex. Very, very smart people have worked on this for 30 years to get it right. So encryption now is so robust as to be uncrackable. A good encryption scheme is not crackable. And it's just what we need to do, the stuff that we need to do, like banking on the internet and buy stuff. And, and that's what's been worked on for 30 years in modern computers to make them safe to use. It's all good, right? Mm. There are some that would say that it's not all good. Governments, law enforcement say it's not all good, folks. We can't tell what the terrorists are, they're, they're using the internet, but they're using encryption, so we can't tell what they're up to. Okay? Criminal gangs <coughs> are using the internet, but they use good encryption, so we can't see what they're doing. How are we supposed to protect our children if we can't see 
what some of these websites are. What they say is the internet is going dark for us. We can't see what's going on anymore because of encryption. Well, you've got to ask yourself. Does anybody really need to see what someone else has made private? Now, that's a rhetorical question, but it's one that you have to ask yourself. And give that some thought over the next little while. Does anybody really need to see what someone else has made private? For law enforcement, are there other tools? Are there other, um, are there other kinds of things that they can do to build their cases and, and find evidence and all of that stuff? Is there other things that they can do? Um, and in a world where the mantra is trust no one, trust no one, who do you trust? Do you trust your government? Do you trust bureaucrats? Do you trust the guy up the street? Who do you trust? It's a, it's a question you have to answer, you, you have to ask yourself along with this other question of does anyone really need to see what someone else has made private? Okay? Rent begins here. <laughs> governments, large democratic governments have already tried to weaken encryption programs by implementing flawed methods of encryption. If the method is flawed and only one person knows about it, that person can exploit it or one entity. They've already done this. Governments are now trying to coerce companies into designing their products with back doors for the government to get in, for law enforcement to get in. Well, we'll go just a little bit further. Law enforcement in many countries, democratic countries, are using the courts to force companies to give up their encryption keys. We've heard about this. In the, in the last few months, we've heard about this. So there you go. There's, there's just three of the things that have been happening. Make encryption less robust or put back doors in programs or force people to give up the keys to the kingdom. Okay? The things that have been done already, and as I said, um, what, what was done a while ago was to infiltrate the scientific community, scientists who were um, on the payroll of the NSA, the National Security Administration, and put forward compromised technologies. They did that. They went to conferences and they said, here is a, a great technology for encryption that, that we recommend and uh, everybody in the industry should start using it. And it was flawed. Nobody knew that, only the NSA, because they built the flaw into it. So they could use it. Find the weak points in encryption, in the architecture, and keep these weaknesses secret. This is what the NSA has done. This is what um, GCHQ um, has done as well. That's the, that's the British equivalent of uh, the NSA. Um, and they found weaknesses, okay. But they didn't tell anybody. And to this day, those weaknesses that they found are still unpatched by the companies that own the technologies. Anybody getting angry? <laughs> Give us a minute? Okay. 
Um, the other thing that they've done is to attack server pathways, and we talked about this, um, where um, the United States government um, essentially tapped into the the um, the connections between um, encrypted servers, which were unencrypted. They just tapped in and slurped up everything. Okay, so they they attacked uh, the pathways that were unencrypted, um, and. They used law enforcement and the courts to coerce uh, companies in, into handing over encryption keys to their products. Now, a couple of months ago, maybe six months ago, there was a company called LavaBit. And LavaBit had an encrypted email service for people that wanted to use it to keep their email absolutely private. You might be able to, to glom the email from off the internet, but to look at it, it was just jumbled. You couldn't make head or tail of it. The courts went, uh, law enforcement went to the courts and got an order from the courts to present to LavaBit to say, um, we believe these people who are your clients with uh, encrypted email are doing bad stuff. Um, you must give us the encryption keys to your service so we can look at their email. Not, they said, not everybody's, just theirs. Problem with that was that those, the, those encryption keys were for everybody. And uh, LavaBit lost. The United States government set a precedent where, whereby uh, when they demand encryption keys from products, they must be handed over. LavaBit, to their um, to their great to hooray, uh, the next day closed their company. They were doing all right; they were making millions a year. But the next day, they closed their company, and on their website they said, uh, "We've lost this case." And we can no longer ensure that your private communications through LavaBit will remain private. Good for them. Another case that's going through the courts and, and should hit the Supreme Court very shortly is the U.S. government is demanding that Microsoft give access to its servers in Ireland. These servers are not even on this continent. But because they are owned by a company on this, con on this continent, the legal argument can be made, well, no matter where in the world they are, you own them, we want access, you must give it to us. That one's going to hit the Supreme Court sometime in the next few months. The other thing that uh, the United States... NSA did, was they broke the encryption on Skype. Well, it was relatively easy. It wasn't that good. But they convinced Microsoft not to repair it. So it's still broken. Anything they want to know that you're talking on Skype, well, there you go. They can get in. They can listen in. Anybody getting angry yet? The little vein here, is it popping out yet? I joke on Skype. Here's some of the things that the government wants to do. That they've already said that they want to do this. They want to make it illegal to offer hardware that is encrypted by default, particularly phones. Um, Apple is going to put out a phone in the next few months that will be encrypted by default. And Apple will not have the keys to that encryption to decrypt it for law enforcement. They've said as much. Uh, there are two bills already before these products have even hit the street to say this will be illegal. You cannot sell a product 
which can be encrypted by default. That's what they want. They want to enshrine in law that companies must allow penetration points for the government and keep that fact secret from the public. Wouldn't the government be breaking the law then too? Because they no, if they enshrine it in law, it's their law. But they, they encrypt everything that they do. Yeah. So wouldn't that be breaking the law? Um, I mean, if they make mm -hmm. it... Illegal. Yeah, there, there are a hundred ways to get around it to get what they want. And what they want mm -hmm. is to enshrine into law that companies must put in these penetration points. In other words, defeat their own encryption. How can you keep it a secret, though? You're already talking about it. Well, they, um, <laughs> after it's, uh, a fait accompli, the companies will not be able to talk about what they've done. Okay, they will not be able to talk about what they've done. This is already well established in law that if the, the United States government goes to a, an American company and says, we need to have in, information about this, that, and the other thing uh, from what's called the FISA court, the company can't argue with them and they can't tell anybody that this was done. It's against the law. Anybody getting angry yet? Banking and anything like that, then really you shouldn't be doing yeah, well. We'll get to that. Um, another thing that they want is to comply with any demand by law enforcement or government for access um, to information and keep that demand secret from the public. That's what I just said. Okay? They go to these big companies, they say, we need this information, you must give it to us, and you can't tell anybody that we're here to get it. That's already done. Make all encryption schemes subject to approval by government oversight. If it's really, really good, the government might not let it go through. If it's really, really good, it's already illegal in some jurisdictions to sell really robust encryption schemes to certain other governments. Democratic governments do this. They make sure that uh, in, encryption schemes uh, are not sold to Iran. We want to be able to listen in. So they already do that. All right. How's the government or this, any of these democratic entities going to convince you that this will be good for you? Propaganda. That's how they always do it. And the points that they will jump all over are that you are fearful of crime. Crime is coming home next door. You are fearful of terrorists. The word strikes fear into you as it is. It's, that's what it's supposed to do. And beyond that, we put here fear of the other. Okay, and we're starting to see that in the last couple of months. Let's call the other Syrian refugees. People are now fearful of them. Let's call them any other kind of ref refugee from war-torn areas, Lebanese. Um, maybe some terrorists have infiltrated into these poor people and are on their way. Fear of the other. The other is anybody that's not you. And I said this once before, and maybe I shocked some of you when I said it, but remember that all you have to do to find out what exactly what that means is to ask any Japanese Canadian over the age of 75. Okay? The other name for this propaganda is populism. You hear that all the time as a political phrase. People say, oh, well, this, this is 
a populist idea. What it really means is it's an idea that's pandering. And if it's pandering, it's pandering to the worst in us. To a large degree, that's true. But then um, um, politicians are quick to jump on the fact that they can make a little hay while this sun shines, that they can make a populist idea and become popular for it. Okay, why is this attack on encryption a bad idea? Basically, <clears throat> it's that if encryption, internet encryption for, for anything, for mail, for banking, for buying stuff, for just talking to your friends, is, is compromised in any way by any entity, be it government, be it bureaucrat, be it technocrat, eventually we will be compromised by criminals and enemies of the government. You can't keep that kind of thing to yourself. Once it gets out that there's a back door into a program, people will go and find it. We don't have the best hackers, folks. The other people do. And we have to be, uh, if we're trying to protect something, we have to be right every time. The hacker only has to be right once. The other part of the argument is that uh, innovation in encryption and the effectiveness, effectiveness of the internet will cease. People won't, won't uh, go out and do the necessary scientific work to make encryption better and if that's the case you will not be able to trust the internet no one will trust the internet again if it ever gets out that encryption has been compromised by whoever but that's only for our us and our friends our democratically elected Government friends, okay. Foreign companies will offer what we have destroyed. And they will reap the rewards. They will offer the encryption that we really need. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Does that have anything to do with uh, my access code? You know, I'll go to this site that says they can't be found out for 600 years. Yes, yeah. That's part of it. That's... Uh, I, I have deliberately not gone into how um, the, gone into the weeds on how encryption works, because, like I said, the mathematics is mind-numbing. Okay, and there's there's no need for it. Just understand that it is under attack. Um, you know, things like your password, uh, which your password generates an encryption key. Okay, um, things like that. Um, that's where this is coming from. Okay, there are some voices that are sane about this. And they have started to uh, come to the forefront in the last month or so. Surprisingly, um, up to a couple of months ago, the, uh, the director of the FBI in, in uh, Yankee Land uh, was saying, we have to have encryption broken, we have to be able to see what's in it, blah, 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 and on and on and on he went, and then the politicians around him started the same hue and cry, we have to know, we have to break, it, break through encryption. Um, just last week, uh, of all people, the new director of the NSA, the National Security Administration, said, hey, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. If we do as these people are suggesting, we put ourselves at risk by weakening encryption. Everybody needs strong encryption. So there are some sane people out there, mostly technocrats and bureaucrats with some knowledge 
that are saying, wait a minute, you political types. Shut your gobs. You don't know what you're talking about. This could hurt us. They are urging caution and deeper thought on the, on the problem. Hooray for them. So there are some voices out there. What can you do? You're just a little computer club, right? Who uses the internet all the time. Stay aware and informed. How many of you um, outside, um, how many of you have heard of any of the things that I've talked about in the last 10 minutes? Okay. Yeah, you've heard some blurbs on the news. I think I've heard or read. Yeah. Microsoft will no longer support Windows. Yeah. Well, well, uh, the older forms of Windows, but that's encryption too. Um, so, but you've heard some rumblings in the background. Become more aware about this because it affects every one of us. Um, Stay informed on it if you can. If you hear a news blurb about it, maybe go on to the internet and see if there's more information to be had about it. Um, keep your ears open for uh, our own political windbags making, um, making hay on this when they ought to keep their crap shut. It's your internet. You're the ones that have to protect it. I'm one voice. I know a few other voices. But if all of you here know a couple of other voices that can get on the bandwagon, it does not take long to say to your friends, be aware, listen up for this. If these people have their way, the internet will not be safe to use. Okay? It will not be safe to use. And my happy home will go away. <laughs> okay, that's uh, pretty much what uh, I have to say today. Um, any, any thoughts on what I've talked about here? You like that rant? <laughs> you, mentioned, you mentioned governments and that, but what about Microsoft? Should we be scared of Microsoft? We're going to just put Mi us all in. Uh, the large companies that have been coerced and compromised by larger governments that they have to get along with, um, yes, our old buddy from a couple of years ago, Eddie Snowden, remember him? Yeah. Um, he put the word out that yes, these companies you thought you could trust, you can't trust them as far as you can throw a pickup truck. Okay, remember that. That these companies like Microsoft and Google and Yahoo and all of the rest of them are only in business um, at the pleasure of the democratic regimes that they are in and even the undemocratic ones that they are in. Google is not in China, or they were there but not for very long, okay, because they wouldn't knuckle under to the regime's idea of what um, a company should be doing in their country. So Google left and along came Baidu, okay, their version of search. Um, can we say kudos to them? Uh, early on in their in their uh, in their life, uh, their motto was "Don't do evil." Uh, it has since changed a bit over the years, but they try to stick with it of "Don't do evil." Um, so, like I said, these all of these big companies they're they're not in this alone. They they have to serve two masters. They have to serve us as their customers um, and they have to serve the entities in which they are ensconced. So, uh, is there a conflict there? You bet. Anything else? What we're doing now, is that, is that safe? Yes, 
the way the way the internet is set up now is relatively safe to use. Now, um, let us just say that tomorrow you got it in your head that I want all of my email communications to be encrypted end to end, and I'm going to go and get a program that will do that. And all of my friends that email me and all of my emails to my friends will be encrypted. Do you become a target? Because you're doing something out of the ordinary. You're hiding your stuff from anybody that wants to see it. Who does the surveillance on this? It's all done. Like is it automatically tagged? Or? Yeah, yeah, to, to some degree. It's, it's all automatically tagged up and, Take it out of and taken out of context, really. Yeah. But if that's the case, if, if you become a target, because you have simply decided that no one needs to see your stuff. Remember, you've become a target. And people will, there are people and there are entities out there that will not rest until they know what you've been saying. And your apple dumpling recipe will not be safe. <laughs> Have the Maldives knocking on your door. Exactly so. And ceases. <laughs> All right. Third pressure in the government, Canadian government right now. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, folks. That's been the hour. Uh, thanks, James. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you again next week. Yes. That's Computer Club lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.